Thank you. It's a great environment to, uh, to speak about Ram Dirt between these uh, beautiful walls. And uh, my intention today is really just to, to give you a very specific uh, aspect, uh, which is, uh, you might call it marketing or you would call it uh, uh, the success of a material. Um, how can we broaden the success of Ram Dirt? We have here a lot of uh, true believers. Uh, so I won't go into the detail of environmental uh, advantages of a material, uh, which you all know and you will just find it, um, maybe somebody else might have explained that more clearly. But I would, uh, I would see, uh, looking from less than all other materials, how can rammed earth could be a successful, broad, popular material? And, uh, and I think it's important because it's the only way of, uh, of making the material uh, having an impact onto the building and architecture of Australia. So, um, and um, where, where that came from is that if you, if you start Google on uh, rammed earth or Pisa or, or Adobe, on, uh, you will find quite... Uh, boring and, and, and uninspiring images of buildings. Uh, now, I hope nobody designed this building in here, but, uh, uh, but it, it's, it's not specifically boring. It's a, it's a normal house. It could be a project home. And, uh, and uh, the only difference has got around this wall. So, so what can uh, uh, make uh, a material more inspiring than uh, what you normally see on, on this uh, website. A lot of websites in, in, you know, about round earth, they're all brown. Uh, they've got brown backgrounds. They, 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 they're pretty, uh, I won't say uninspiring. Uh, they, they, they need a bit of, uh, Tony Blair will, will say, let's make it a little bit more sexing up the material. And um, who did very well in that, in that field was, um, was a, the material in particular of corrugated iron. And through Glenn Merkert um, in the 80s and 90s, for those who started working at that tem time, like me, uh, corrugated iron was, uh, was still a kind of a black sheep of a material because it was used in sheds and industrial buildings. And, um, and, and was considered uninspiring. And uh, 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 with the work of Glenn Merkert, uh, uh, basically, he was very, very incidental, into, very, very uh, uh, essential to broaden uh, this uh, material. Then there was a Sydney school, and then it, it went on. And how Merkert made the material interesting is uh, obviously... Uh, whimsical architecture, very good detailing, very good, um, um, uh, as Marsha say, photography uh, that, 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 that spread all over the world and uh, it became also a Pritzker Prize. Um, so um, this, uh, uh, this is what I've been trying to do, is just to uh, broaden up the, the, over, the, over the years uh, the use of this material. Um, and uh, we, we are quite, we've got a big following as architect and not because of around us, because of all the works that we've done before. And I thought that was important as, uh, as my engagement to, to develop uh, uh, an environmental, environmental uh, uh, architecture is to uh, broaden the and, and to develop the, the round earth fields um, and become and try to, to be the, the role model. Um, Martin Rausch was for me my role model uh, and is uh, I'm sure that you've seen his books, his publication. He's a very good, very good, very good architect, very good um, thinker and a theoretician, and also a publicist. He wrote books, which are the, you know, the seminal, and, and, and he, wrote, he built this beautiful chapel in Berlin, which I always use as inspiration. And um, 
and that's, um, that's his own house. He's used his own house as an experimental ground. And, uh, and before him, you had few other archi important architects like Adolf Floss, which was basically the, one of the first modern in the 1900s in Vienna. Um, he was uh, incidental into the use of rammed earth. He had to do very economical housing in the 30s. And, um, and uh, the only way to do it was uh, to use what was at the time a very economical material. And alas, it's not the case today. And we'll get to that point. Um, so that's Adolf Floss. Um, and Frank Lloyd Wright, he was a very good publicist of himself and also a very good publicist of his work. And he did uh, also try to do uh, some economical housing with rammed earth. It was a great failure. The, um, the, the, the rammed earth was underground, as you can see. So there was damp problems and the, 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 the exercise was dropped. So they, they, they tried, but they failed. Um, Corbusier, too, they did the one project, but uh, he was uh, converted to concrete. And, and, uh, and that's, that's quite an interesting way where concretes in the 50s and the 40s, thanks to Corbusier, he became a very... Uh, so Corbusier did the Chandigarh uh, um, uh, new town in, um, in Pakistan. Um, he was very important to develop the, the, the material, which was concrete. Um, which had a flourishing after his after following his work. So Corbusier was a, kind of the role model of concrete, and um, and uh, unfortunately uh, there is a resurgence of this. So you know the, the concrete was very popular in the fifties, sixties, seventies, then eighties. Everybody hated it. And uh, because they, everybody had gone to that university there, uh, they had a terrible time. Uh, they hated the space they were into um, and uh, reacted against. So there was a lot of what was called at the time brutalist architecture, uh, which was used to make police stations. And uh, obviously, the image of concrete was tarnished. And luckily for uh, the environment point of view. Um, but unfortunately, it's quite a sad to see that the new generation of architects, there is a kind of, um, if you follow Instagram or Twitter, there is all these brutalist sites, uh, neo-brutalist, and they, there is a lot of followers, and, uh, and uh, the Saving the Serious in Sydney is one of them, which is a positive thing, because it was housing for... for, for um, uh, uh, for people um, which cannot afford housing. Um, in this case, uh, I saw some on those, on those uh, Instagram sites, uh, people loading the bunker, which is the Surrey Hills Police Centre in um, Sydney, and uh, as a fantastic brutalist experiment. And unfortunately, it has a terrible connotation, and I think it's a sad thing also that concrete um, need, doesn't need to be uh, rediscovered. Um, so, rammed earth has found a lot of role models uh, overseas. Uh, we got Martin Rausch, currently. Uh, we got uh, Rick Joy, which is uh, this American architect, um, and then um, we got Kerry Hills, uh, and we got others which are doing fantastic work. Um, and they um, basically trying to valorize the attributes of this material. Um, and uh, Rick Joy is very, is very good at, uh, at accentuating the, the warmth the character of a material, which is the warmth, um, the textures. Uh, it's very rich in textures <laughs> as a material, um, in, as in this case. And the, the fact that the material can integrate very well into the environment, if, particularly if the, the, the earth comes from, from a site 
which has been uh, developed. So this is uh, an Amman uh, hotel in uh, um, somewhere in New Mexico, if I remember, and uh, and uh, is using material from um, from 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 the site. Um, obviously, Rick Joy also has got the luck of working in incredibly beautiful environment. Uh, so the architecture uh, becomes a good dialogue with this fantastic um, landscapes. Um, and and this, this is important because it's an hotel, so there, there's a lot of people living in there and uh, going there, for, living there for a few days. And in, uh, absorbing the material and getting used to it. So hotels are always kind of very, very good at, at, at disseminating uh, a materials or a concept. You know, I, I keep on having clients coming and say, oh, I need to have a bathtub in, means in the middle of my bedroom because I, I was in this hotel there. And I don't know who was in this bathtub, but the, uh, they, they love their bathtub. There is another company of architects in Portugal, which is called Blank Architects, that did this beautiful, very small building. And I think it's important also that the, the architects that work in uh, residential or you know houses uh, are, in fact, the one which managed to uh, to convey to everyone, to every every person's. Uh, the, the, the pleasure of this material. And, and those, those, those architects would work on, in those, those projects like the, the houses are the one which touches everybody. Everybody lives in a house. While if you present the kind of an, uh, a, a factory or, or a, a public building, it might not, uh, uh, it might not um, convey, uh, it might not uh, uh, speak to, to the person who is... Uh, uh, was looking at those uh, at those at those buildings, so this is a house and um, in a vineyard in in Portugal, and uh, it has again the very strong uh, accentuation by contrast of with the white walls and the white floors and the white ceilings to the Ramdeth itself. It's like a picture basically, and and it is. Uh, accentuated in that way, and um, so the people also can relate because you know there is a standard furniture, there is a rug, there is a kitchen, and so so they say, oh, I can have that at my home, at my home, and that's how how you can spread the the word uh, more easily. Uh, obviously, Portugal, Australia, New Mexico. They're all fantastic climates. It's much harder to convey that to different climates, uh, which uh, the Ramdas might not be as, as usable. Um, I would say Scotland, for example. Uh, so this is, again, this house in the vineyard. Um, this is another example, which is more sculptural. And I'm sure that the, the decay uh, forensic scientists will come and, uh, and, um, and, and, and find a lot of problem in this. But, um, so how to accentuate, how to convey, how to, how to accentuate the, the, the physical comfort that uh, uh, clay and earth can provide to, uh, to a building. Um, so I'll take an example. It was uh, mentioned before the Kiribili house. Um, so I had a, a client who came, who was a very wealthy uh, journalist in Sydney, in Kiribili, which is very close to uh, Opera House. You know, the, it's one of the suburbs closest to the Opera House. It's opposite the water, but it's very close. And... Um, uh, the um, thing was that uh, in a suburban situation, very often nobody have 
if you look online, you find ramdas being used in the countryside, in, in the deserts, but very fine, nobody finds examples in a suburban situation. And, um, and I wanted to try the suburban situation and, and develop it. And so this client was a journalist, so he was quite clever. He was interested in having a building which would be um, with a, uh, a very um, low carbon footprint on his daily usage. Um, so and that was part of a brief. Um, so we um, uh, have presented the, here a building which looks like a one-story building, but in fact it's is got uh, three stories. And it's a sloping site. Um, and we developed this uh, uh, cooling system. I mean, Sydney, the heating is not a big deal, but they, we, 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 we developed this passive system in this house um, with uh, a, the fact that the site was steep and we had to have this big stairwell going from the street down to the bottom of the site where there is a waterfront and obviously the living space had to be at the bottom. So people had to go down these stairs, it had to be a very inviting stairs. So we formed this kind of chimney effect with this stair and, um, and normally the chimney effect, it takes the hot air from down the bottom and takes it up. And uh, what we try to do here is something else. To, so we try to um, not only take the hot air from down the bottom, we take the sea breeze uh, which is quite damp in Sydney, um, and uh, go along a wall, a, northern, a southern wall, so this wall is on the south side of the house, and um, it is made of round earth. Uh, on top of a wall there is a skylight, and on top of a skylight there is louvers, uh, metal louvers, and so there is a sun control. So the idea was there is to have a wall which, uh, uh, with the agroscopic effect of the clay, would absorb the humidity, and then with the breeze going up the stairs, would let it evaporate, and the wall should be should have been uh, a certain amount of degrees less than than uh, than the air which was flowing through the stairwell, and that did work very well, plus there was a combined uh, system which was to capture the sun in winter and then the mass of the round earth uh, liberating it when you need it uh, towards the end of a day when people come back home from work um, you have this warmth coming off of, of, this, of this, uh, this wall. So, this was um, the idea which we developed and, and presented to the client and say, yeah, go ahead. Um, so that, under that, we were able to use a material that you wouldn't have thought about using. You say, ah, oh, it's a bit of hippie stuff, you know, around the earth, you know, who wants to use around the earth? I want stone, I want, you know, marble, etc. No. Now, he was convinced that that would be the solution. Um, we had a, a, a separate issue there. We had beautiful views, so we wanted to keep some views. So the wall is, seems very thin, but it's 450 thick and is tapered. Um, China Wall did build it in uh, in um, in um, for us, uh, and um, uh, that will be another story. Um, so this is the stair. This is a wall in with the sun option, you can turn electrically the louvers and turn the sun off. But obviously, the dogs know where it's comfortable to be in the house. And basically, this was an exercise on comfort. We wanted to make a comfortable house and without the use air conditioning. So even there, we had um, a scheme, which is a separate story, uh, where you know, obviously a waterfront house in Sydney should have air conditioning. So we said, well, just let's put ducting, let's put gas heating for winter, but no air conditioning. And if you want to add air conditioning, is a, 
is a space and there is a power, you can add air condition later. So that, that was uh, uh, one, of, one of the many clients that we have uh, converted uh, to not to use air condition. And, um, and it is difficult because basically there's a huge demand. So they want to say, oh, but make sure that if we sell the property, we can always put air condition because <laughs> you, know, you cannot sell a house without air condition. Um, so, and I say to them, but you know, sooner or later, you'll be so proud that you'll sell it as air conditioning free, you know, like asbestos free. Uh, but that's still, still time to come for that. Um, so this is part of a living space. So the, then the second aspect that they really liked, and they asked for, uh, we, they had a, a Jaga floor. Um, so we, they asked us for this very reddish earth which comes from Mittagong. And obviously effluence, you know, when you have a yacht, you have a waterfront, you have to have a barbecue. Um, and this was... Uh, um, it took us more time designing the barbecue than the house, I think, uh, uh, and, and to build it too because uh, there was huge complications. Um, this shows you the barbecue detail and, and um, the problem was that he wanted to have exhaust on the barbecue. He said, well, why do you want, I want to have exhaust because I don't want to spew. So that was the difficulty. Um, so... So that was a comfort aspect, and then the psychology of a material. Um, you, 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 uh, you, you obviously will think about, uh, you know, um, the warmth, the, the texture, etc. But I think it's also in this case it's quite an interesting exercise. So we we had uh, again uh, a very wealthy client uh, with a huge property in the Pilbara. And that's the environment uh, where he had his family homestead at the bottom. Um, he asked us to do quite a lot of work uh, to restore. Um, we're doing a lot of work of heritage buildings. The heritage buildings and adding new buildings. So there was about 14 buildings that uh, we restored. We added three buildings. And then um, you'll see... Uh, where is that? In the background, this, this, there was a sand dune here. Um, and uh, the river, there's the uh, Ashburton's River here. It's where the, you see more trees. And then uh, after we restore the, the homestead, he, he said, oh, we need uh, more accommodations for um, uh, the masters. Uh, so there's lots of kind of people coming for, to mastering season. And um, the, the properties, at the time it wasn't, it was about a third of that, what's now, and the property now is the size of Switzerland. Um, and uh, so the property was uh, uh, funded in, uh, in 1868. And that was, uh, that was uh, the original homestead. Uh, some some of the internal restoration, and this is some of the old building that uh, we restored. Uh, we had to uh, pull the corrugated iron out uh, and put it back as it was. You know, uh, there was a lot of termite. Uh, so he asked us for uh, twelve new accommodations. So this um, uh, this uh, like little little self-contained bedrooms with a little kitchenette and bath. And, um, and uh, he wanted to be built on top of a sand dune. And I said, no, but it's going to look like, a, like a, um, a little suburban development. So, you, know, you, you really don't want to spoil a sand dune. Um, let's... Um, and, and his wife was very, very against that because she said, oh, look, you're going to die to the husband and we're going to have all this building to maintain and what, 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 um, it's going to be a nightmare for us. So um, I suggested, well, what about, one, to build underground because then you're going to have much less 
facades to paint, and uh, she was concerned about the paint. The, 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 you know, I don't want this building to paint. So uh, build underground, and he said, no, no, I'm not a hobbit. I don't want to go underground. I said, no, because that's going to maintain the building uh, in constant temperature. Uh, you're not going to have to, because there's you know, it's 50 degrees in summer, and you don't need to uh, worry about when they're not used to be overheating. You don't have to run air conditioning. Um, you do not have to... Um, uh, and then with an external wall made of rammed earth and with, uh, there was a capping in Cortain steel uh, and, and awnings in steel, Cortain steel, you don't have to do any maintenance. Um, so they thought, ah, that's a great idea. Uh, and so she said yes, and he was very happy because she said yes. And, um, uh, and this was totally un unthought of, this, this client. is a, is a guy who digs up mines and, you know, uh, he's got no, not at all uh, a sense of uh, environmental conscience. Um, and, um, uh, but he was very happy. He got his mining trucks and dug the hill. Uh, um, and um, we dug the hill and built these 12 uh, accommodations and a chapel in the middle. So the, the middle building, it, it, it was a family chapel because uh, underneath there is uh, a, a cemetery, a uh, family cemetery. And um, um, so uh, we dug the hill. You can see there before. So they dug the hill. They put the sand there on a pile on the right-hand side and uh, built them and then recovered it. Um, he insisted on being higher than it was before. Uh, higher, higher. The, the engineer said, no, no, we only allow for a meter on top of the roof. No, higher, I want it higher. Uh, see, this is under construction. I, this is a photo which is, uh, has got nothing to do with what I'm supposed to speak, speak today. But uh, the Parliament House in Canberra should have been built in Rammed Earth. Um, that's how I came to Australia with the Parliament House in Canberra. We, and when you, when you see the walls of a Parliament House in Canberra, I think they would have been much better in Rammed Earth. And instead of terracotta roof on the Senate and House, it should have been just red dirt. Um, and that's the sections before the meter, before the, the height was added on. Uh, obviously, the steel roofs were prefabricated in Perth and put on trucks, delivered, and assembled there. Uh, it's very, there's no labor there, so it was very difficult to do it, everything on site. Um, but uh, the, I forgot the name of the firm, but it's one of the best firms in Western Australia, did the round earth. They did all the work, taking uh, the clay from clay pans, just a few, one kilometer or two away from the uh, from, uh, site, the gravel from Reviva, River, uh, there, there's um, a lot of kind of uh, beautiful uh, round gravel of different, different size and, and, and the sand also from the property. And um, it stabilized Earth, 6%. Um, and we had a capping there, uh, you know, after listening uh, to this uh, Dirk, Dirk uh, presentation. Um, and there was a cost cutting by the project manager. Uh, they took the capping off. I say not to. And now it's going currently back. Uh, uh, they, they came back to put the cappings. Um, so that's the chapel, which was to be an, an open chapel. Then they decided to close it up. And, um, and so you can see that the psychology of the material, in this case, the client, there was the factor I described before, but I think the most important aspect for him was that the clay come from the site and the pebbles come from the river. And basically, uh, we did some slabs, uh, there's slabs on grounds. Uh, uh, we slightly polished to show that they've got all the pebbles from the river. Um, so, 
everything is local. That was very important for him. And what was very important for him too, because you know he likes to do the fastest, uh, the longest railway, no, the quickest railway uh, in the Western world or whatever, in the Southern Hemisphere, to be built, etc. He uh, he um, he was very pleased because it was the longest rammed earth wall on the Southern Hemisphere, and uh, 230 meters long, and that. That was a little bit cheating because uh, so he, he, this is the low wall and it's connected by a step here and then it keeps on going so that otherwise it's only half as much. Uh, and um, there's a, there's a um, um, chapel looking at the cemetery and then on the far you see the river gums, beautiful river gums. So what what these pictures also uh, have been very popular all over the world. They, we we won incredible awards, um, and uh, one of them was uh, um, Arc Daily, which is uh, the most published uh, uh, online publication of uh, of architecture, and it was a building of a year uh, together with you know big names. Uh, uh, ten, 10 big names uh, two years ago. And then uh, uh, the Terra Award. Uh, so, and why I think it was popular, I think it's, it was popular because something totally unrelated. Um, I think the, this kind of aerial views, which we're very lucky that we did, um, they reminded a bit, a bit of Aboriginal paintings, you know, with these uh, dots and, and, and incredible shapes. Um, and and this, this way of looking at a landscape and architecture from a different point of view. So just going quickly through those. So you can see the the, the concrete slab on the floor with uh, with a river, the river pebbles and um, an exposed round earth wall. Um, and the same client asked us to do more uh, more additions to this building and. To do is it, got different homesteads, so it needs uh, more accommodations that uh, are built with uh, uh, portables. So you, you buy two portables in this case, and they link together. So you buy those; they're made in Perth, uh, and then carpenters add the verandas and uh, the section in between. And in this case, we had a system. Um, this should be a GIF, but it doesn't work. Uh, there, there. Okay, so where you uh, have a rammed earth, uh, a, a pressed earth slab, um, and that was to uh, absorb the humidity from the ground in between the two buildings, absorb the humidity from the ground, there's not much in there, and create with this uh, breezeway in between current which would evaporate the uh, the air and um, go through the chimney effect to the central part and cool the communal space. So there is bedrooms for the workers and in between you have a living space which will be cooled in daytime through this kind of breeze going through and if the building is oriented the right way. Okay, um, So that was this uh, <coughs> this exercise. Um, now, what are the obstacles to, to the widespread use of, of round earth? And, you know, um, my time is going quickly, so they're very short. Uh, in very, very short words, is, there is not the... It's a building with a good uh, thermal mass, but doesn't have enough critical mass. Uh, critical mass is important to to make it affordable, it's expensive. It's bloody expensive, and that's only you have, you know, uh, um, universities, uh, very dedicated people, or people doing themselves, or uh, wealthy people like this that uh, build it. So we we need to have a critical mass, and and then you have more uh, contractors. There's in Sydney, there's basically. Two and then one comes from Byron, the other comes from from here, and 
uh, China wall went, went broke, they got alcoholics and so they stopped and uh, so there, there's nobody. Um, so we are doing all these buildings here and then every time we have problems in sourcing the, the, the contractors. Um, so this is building under construction. Tony Wright is uh, building this. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a very whiz-bang kids who uh, did a lot of money with uh, computer uh, software, uh, building a house in Tamarama. Um, and uh, so we need this critical mass. And the critical mass can come only if the material has got a good marketing, you know, it's a terrible word, but that's what we need. So we need to, to be encouraging the use of it through images, website, etc. And, and, um, and that's what, uh, you know, I've been trying to do. Um, and so and we use it in a, quite a lot of uh, different projects. And what is the future? Well, I, I'm, I'm sure that is, uh, you, you, you need a good culture for a material to flourish. And there is this good culture. There is this will of uh, having a, a building material which has got uh, uh, a smaller uh, environmental footprint than all the other materials that we have to use. And um, there is, uh, on, on, in, in this culture, we need to, to find good examples. So, um, I think there is that's happening, and and uh, uh, Kerry Hill, which is another Australian Singaporean architect, is doing very good work. He's doing an Aman, all sorts of Aman resorts in Nepal, in Bhutan, with Ram Dass, and um, and I think that's that's going to help a lot. From our side, this is current current projects. This is another project in Western Australia. Um, this is one under construction. Um, and uh, it's in very suburb, it's a city, uh, nearly city, so it's Rose Bay in Sydney. Um, so uh, it's, it's a suburb where people, you know, only does what everybody else has done before, so it, it's quite brave of my client to do this. Um, but um, there's a use of a kind of salmon finished around earth, this is another place in Rose Bay, and um, some of the sketches, which is under construction. Oops. So this is one which have recently finished, uh, and uh, it's a we call it a village. It's a it's addition to a, a her heritage listed building on the left, um, uh, in a very large block in the north north of Sydney. Luigi? Yes, nearly finished. Uh, so this is the images and that's the final result. And um, uh, Luke Maloney built this um, beautifully. And we don't mind the joints on the, on the boards at all. Um, and uh, um, this was a quite difficult tower to build. But this, is, this was another, and that's a final project exercise where we tried to broaden the use of it. Uh, unfortunately, it was a competition and we didn't win it. Um, it's in Fremantle. It's a public building for a Green Council. And um, uh, it's a new addition to the town hall. The town hall is on the right. And it was going to be a library and, and community centre. So we, we wanted to do what the termites do. We basically, uh, termites build their clay nest, and we wanted to do the same. So bring the air from the basement. There was a kind of a very wide basement storage area. And then bring the cool air from underground up through this chimney effect, and then through openings, recirculate it. Uh, into the communal spaces. So there was these three big chimneys. Thank you very much.